Hi everyone, it's Jill Lancet again <laughs> for the second time this week. How has your week been? I've had a wonderful week. Um, I've had a quick look at the new catalogue that comes out very, very soon. And there are butterflies. There's some butterfly stamps that I love butterflies. And so I've been a little bit obsessed with butterflies uh, this week. So I've got a little card for us. It's using some um, origami, um, but on a card. So I'm going to get straight into it. Um, there's my online store. If you want to purchase anything, you, you can go there. If you need anything, any information, that's my email address. So, yep, send me an email if there's something that you're not quite clear on and, and I'll help you sort it out. Or if you want to uh, have the free templates that I'm going to use uh, tonight, uh, I can send you the PDF. Uh, so, yeah, think about that. Um, okay, so what I have here is uh, a piece of 6 by 6 designer series paper. Now, this particular one is from the beautiful, um, what's it called? Fresh as a Daisy Suite. Uh, Fresh as a Daisy designer series papers. I will put all of the details in the description below. Don't worry about that. Don't worry about grabbing a piece of paper. It's all going to be in there, okay? So I got uh, some beautiful, beautiful papers. I've got a piece of our copper clay, uh, one of the ink colours, and I'm just using this one little step, just sending a bit of love your way. I just thought that was a sweet little stamp. So what I'm going to do is, and I'll, I'll show you this one, um, I'll show you this one that I made before. This is retired paper, but I kind of tried to make it into a blokey card, okay? So here's our little butterfly. It's a bookmark. It's going to go on the bottom of your page in your book and keep your place. So I thought that was really nice. I thought it's a thank you card and it's a gift. But what I did with this one was I did a sneaky little um, trace that around with a pencil and then concealed the stamping so that once the bookmark is removed, there is this nice little card that you can keep. I've popped just a little scrap inside and I've written, use this little bookmark and think of me. So kind of like a little thank you card and a little thank you gift all in one. So it just slides on like that just slides on like that. Now what I did do was I kind of glued these down, but I'm going to show you that. I'm going to show you that. So that's what we're making, but we're making it different. Okay. Now, as I said, I've been obsessed with these all week. I've got everything cut out, uh, but I want to show you how to make the butterflies. Okay. Now I may make this a few times for you just so that you can see how this works. So what we need to do is, I have a six by six piece of designer series paper. Now out of that six by six piece, you will get two butterflies. So it's really only using a small piece of, uh, of your designer series paper. So we need this to be three inches by six inches. So I'm going to cut that. Now, I haven't planned on using this side of the paper, but I guess you could, but I will use some patterned paper um, a bit later on. So we've got our piece, which is six inches by three inches. So the first thing we're going to do is to fold this. In origami, you do a lot of basic folds and then you unfold them. You know, so that's what we're going to do now. So we're going to fold this in half. And it's great if you've got a bone folder because this will help you um, get those folds really nicely crisp. So normally you would fold it back the other way. Okay, now we're not going to see this side. We're only look, looking for this blue part. So I folded that in half. I've got three, three inches by three inches. 
So I'm opening that out again and I'm going to fold these two sides in towards that center crease. So giving that a nice crisp fold, folding it back the other way. And I'm doing that on the other side as well. So kind of like, kind of like a gate fold. Um, and I'll just go over that with you. So we folded that in half, opened it out again, and we folded both of those pieces in towards the center and creased them. Now we're going to open this out again and we're going to fold it in half this way along the long end edge. So let's get that folded. Okay. So yeah, having a bone folder is, is really helpful. Um, this paper is quite sturdy, so it's, you know, when we get down to some of these folds, it is a little bit thick. So you will need your um, bone folder then. So now we're going to fold this square part in the center, just this square part. We want an X, we want two diagonal folds. Now the easiest way to do this is to fold this along the crease line that's there, that's already there. And give that a good crease. So I've got this kind of V shape and then I'm going to fold it down diagonally. So you're going to end up with a crisscross in the middle, but it's just in that middle square. I will show you. Just hold your horses, honey. So let's turn that back the other way and give it a good crease and we'll turn this one back and give that a good crease as well. Now these folds are very important in origami. It's very important that you have those folds. They have a certain memory to them. So what we're going to do now is we're going to fold these two flaps further in towards that fold that was there on the edge. Okay, so I will show you that again. So now we've made a half fold in this last section. So I'm going to fold that over, I'm going to give it a good crease. Okay, now we have this. We have we have uh, eight little squares and then we have these two pieces on the end and we have an X in the middle. So now what we want to do is we want to fold this in towards one another so we have that. And then we're going to, oh no, you've got to turn those inside. That's right, you've got to turn those inside, okay? So I've folded those inside. If we look at it from the back, I've folded those two pieces inside and I'm turning it over like that. So now we're going to squish these two sides in, these two triangles in, and we're left with this sort of like a house-shaped piece. So now we're going to turn those two triangle points outwards and flatten those down. Now here's a good good time to give this a bit of a a bit of a good squish down. So now this is what we have here. Okay, we've got two open sides here. We have a a full side here. We've got our two little flaps here. So now what we're going to do is to fold this whole piece. Now it's quite thick because it's doubled and then doubled again. But we're going to fold this piece down. Now look, I stick my fingernail there because I don't want that to go any further, <coughs> excuse me, than the edge of this triangle. 
I'm going to make this a couple of more times for you, so don't worry. And I want it to end about here. But this point is going to actually overlap here. So keeping my finger there and keeping my finger about there, you can see how this point forms this little triangle. Now this is really important. This is quite thick, so you really want to give this a really good um, crease with your bone folder. Be quite firm about it. And then we're going to do the same thing with the other side. So holding my fingernail there so that I don't tear this. And it simply is a case of eyeballing it. So it kind of looks like looks like a bit of a shirt collar at this point. Dare I say it? So now we're going to give that one a really good crease. And this is important. This is important that you do give this really good crease. So now we've got this funny looking thing. It's kind of sort of similar to a heart. So we're going to open this, these flaps and we're going to open them this way and we're going to push this fold in. Okay, so we've got like wings. So we're going to just push those down like that. And it will follow the fold. It will follow the fold. So now we have our um, basis of our butterfly. So once you've got this open like this, you just want to press these down and give them a good crease. So I've started like this started like this I've opened this up I've pushed this in and basically pushed it down and I've got my butterfly and it's it's quite easy once you get the hang of this it is actually quite easy so there's our little butterfly this little flap here forms our bookmark forms our bookmark so if you wanted to, you could pop a little bit of glue under here, which I will do when I create the card. But I'm going to fold another one, at least another one for you, okay? So I've got some gorgeous, gorgeous paper here. Six inches by three inches. So the first thing we want to do is fold this in half this way to create three by three. Okay, so it's three by three now. I'm going to open this out and fold it back the other way. This is very important. There's no shortcuts. No shortcuts in origami, I found. <laughs> okay, so we want to then fold these two sides in like a gatefold. Now, luckily, this is a, a, like a very good contrast. Um, both sides so that you can see what's happening. So folding that, turning it over, re-scoring it again, refolding that again. The same with this end, gate fold towards the center. Okay, towards the center. And giving that a good score, turning that over and giving that another good score. Okay, so now we've got four vertical folds um, down, down, downwards. So now we're going to fold this in half this way. Okay, so I'm folding this in half this way. So long side to long side. And I'm giving this a good crease. And I'm going to open this out and do it back the other way, okay? Because we really do need to have these creases that have a memory. And that's the whole point of doing that. So now we've got eight squares. 
I'm not sure if you can see those, but eight little squares. So now I'm going to do the diagonal fold. I'm turning this over and I want this point and this point to be folded. So the easiest way to do this is to find this crease and pop this down along the crease. Now, if it helps you to lift this up, then yeah, go for it. Okay, especially if it's a little bit hard to see. So we're creasing that. I'm going to turn this over and crease it the other way. Now, when you've made a few of these, this will become quicker, okay? So I've got one diagonal fold now. So I want to do the same thing with the other side. So I want to take this point and fold it along the fold. Now, again, if you feel as though you need to put that fold up, then go for it. Look, if it makes it easier for you, then yes. Okay. So we're giving that a good fold and then turning it back the other way. Okay, so now we have, I don't know if it's better to see it on this side. We've got our two squares. We've got eight triangles and two squares. So if I do it like that, you might be able to see it a bit better. So now I'm going to, to fold these two ends in in towards this crease so if you need to put your crease up then go for it i can see it so that's fine so just creasing it along there and then turning it and creasing it again the same with this end here okay so find which way is more comfortable for you and go for it now these are the sorts of things you could cut if you wanted to make a lot of these, you could cut your paper six by three and then, I don't know, pop a tray on your lap and, and do this while you're watching TV. Um, yeah. So we've got this now. So we need to fold these two pieces under so that you can see our predominant colour, the colour that we want our butterfly is now being fold over to the back side. Then we're going to turn this over and we're going to push those two triangles in. We're just pushing them in. And because we've done all of this uh, pre preliminary folding, it wants to go in there. It really does. It folds in there really, really well. So we're going to give that a crease all over. Now this might be the bit that I, I might have confused you. So we have this piece here. Now we want to take these two flaps, this is this, these two pieces and fold them out, and these two pieces and fold them out. So we've effectively got the same shape. We're just changing the orientation of it. So we've got these two little flaps that are separated. When we had it like this, it was a solid one piece. So we want to turn these around Give these a really good fold. And this is the beginning of our butterfly now. So remember, we want to take this whole double flap that is folded. We want to take this center point and we want to fold it down. We want it to be about, about this far in. So I'm going to put my nail there. I'm going to fold this in. And I want to stop about there, about a finger width. And you'll see that it overlaps. There's the score line there, and it overlaps. So we're going to give that a really good fold because this is quite thick. And we're going to do the same thing on this side. So we're going to fold this over about a finger width or so. And we're going to give that a good crease as well. Okay, so now we've got our shirt collar. 
or our heart. So we're going to take these pieces and we're going to open them back out again. Now, if you want to, you can turn them back the other way and give them a good crease. Um, it just, you know, reinforces the paper memory of where it's got to go. Okay, so now we've got our piece. So we're going to open those out. We're going to push this in like that. And we're going to flatten that out. So we want to flatten it down as far as it will go. Okay, so I'll show you what I've done. I've pushed those in, they're in like that. Then I want to take this piece and flatten it down. Now this piece has not had a fold in it before, so you might want to give that piece a fold. And that's our butterfly's wings. So I'm going to do the same thing on the other side, okay? I'm going to push that in like that. So it's like that. Instead of it being this way, it's now inverted that fold in that way. And I want to bring this down and flatten it as far as it will go. So I'm going to give that a press and then I'm going to use this bone folder. And there's our butterfly. There's our beautiful butterfly bookmark. I'm going to do it one more time for you. I'm going to do it with this beautiful paper here. Six by three. Fast forward it if you've already got it. But I think the more times you see it, the more you will remember how it goes. So six inches by three inches. We're going to fold it in half this way. And give that a nice crease. And fold it back. I'm going to fold the gate fold ends in and give them a good crease on both ends. Then I'm going to open this out. Don't forget, whatever crease you do, do it back the other way. So now I've got these four rectangles and I'm going to fold it in half long ways. Then I will have eight squares. Eight squares. And I think it's easier to see on the plain side than it is on the pattern side. So I've got eight squares now. Now I'm going to put my cross in the centre square only, in this centre square only. So I'm going to take this, I'm going to put this down here like this along the, the score line. Along that score line. And I'm going to give that a good fold and back the other way and then I am going to do it in the other diagonal so I'm going to go up I've got my finger on the score line there I'm putting that up to there like that I'm going to give that a really crisp fold and do it back the other way so now we've got square square this diagonal in the middle and another square. So we're going to fold this over like this. Actually, I'll, I'll do it. I'll do it the floral way and you can see what it looks like with pretty paper. So we're folding our little ends in. Folding those in like that and turning that around and giving that another good crease. And I'm folding this side in 
and giving that a good crease. Okay. Okay, so we've got this. So we want to fold these two pieces under so that we can see both sides. And then we're going to push these two pieces towards one another and create our little house, our beautiful little house. So we're going to, this is a good time to sort of line that up if it's come unaligned. And then we're going to separate those two and those two and lay them flat okay everything gets a really good fold after you've done it a really good press okay so we've got this now remember so we're going to take our double our double layer and we're putting our nail there we're folding this over leaving about that much there and giving that a good crease really good crease because you've got four layers there and we're doing the same thing on this side here right giving that a really really good crease now you can turn that over and give it another good crease if you wish but I don't think it needs it. So now we're opening those two back up. Okay, we've got our shirt collar or our heart shape. So we're opening these and we're inverting them. Inverting this fold and we're pressing it down. Pressing it down from the middle so that this is straight and we're giving this a really good crease. This is our butterfly. I'm going to do that again. I'm going to open that. Invert that. So I'm going to press this side down. Pressing this side down. And I'm pressing this side down. So that this piece is straight. This piece here is straight. So I'm just giving that a good, a good press down and giving it a good cr crease there. And there's our butterfly. And it's so pretty in the pretty floral paper. It is so pretty. We've still got our little um, pocket that we can put it on our page. Um, to make it into a bookmark okay so that's that you've seen that three times now um, so now I'm going to put this together with a with a into a card but while I have your attention here hang on two secs I just want to beg I just want to beg okay I give you guys two free um, basically two free card making classes per week um, and they're free as I said but you know I would really be so grateful if instead of buying me a coffee um, if you could donate the cost of a coffee to the Canna Maluka Wildlife Rehabilitation Centre in Tasmania. Now I'm going to put the details in there and you know a cup of coffee a month one cup of coffee a month. If you enjoy my videos, one cup of coffee per month that's not even coming to me that is going to a re really good cause. Um, you know, I realise I've got this platform where I can reach out to people and I want to do something really, really good with that. Um, this is my nephew Duncan and his partner Jess and their family and they run this wildlife rehabilitation centre down in Tasmania. They rescue animals, they rescue baby joeys which I found out is the same name for a kangaroo, a paddy melon or a wombat 
probably for a koala as well. Um, but they'll go out and they'll bring these poor little animals home. They will nurse them back to full health. They will rehabilitate them so that they can go eventually back into the wilderness. And, you know, the, the, the world around us needs these animals to be out there. They play a very important role in the ecosystem and we need to start thinking really seriously about saving our own planet. So um, if you could, the cost of a cup of coffee per month, if all of my subscribers did that, which I have about 2,000 odd now, gosh, that would be absolutely amazing because this place is not government funded not government funded it is a registered charity and it is run purely on volunteers and donations so think about that these guys have devoted their home their lives to this and one cup of coffee per month is really not a terrible lot so cheers everybody thank you so much if you can i would be so grateful Thank you. Also, while you're there, could you give me a like? <laughs> give me a thumbs up. And, you know, if you subscribe, you'll get a notification when I actually um, post these videos. Um, so you don't even have to go looking for them. You'll get a, a little pop-up that tells you that I've posted it. And it, share it. Share it. I mean, this has got to be easier than trying to show your friends how to make these butterflies. Just tell them to go find my video. So anyway, I'm going to make this card. I showed you the other card that we, we made that I made earlier. Um, so I just wanted to show you the things that I've put together to try and make this into a nice card. So I said, as I said, I've used this uh, little stamp set here from the Lovely and Sweet. So we'll pop that out of the way. I've already stamped it. But I will stamp it again and I will show you how I did that. Um, it's a long skinny one. So I've just used um, some copper clay. So I've got here copper clay. Now I picked up the copper clay from the actual uh, designer series paper. I would not have thought those two colours would look good together. But look how great they look. So anyway, I punched out the... Um, the double oval punch from the center of this. Now I pushed that right in. Now let me just tell you something. I've pushed that right, 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 right in and it just fits this card. Uh, it, that was a happy accident that I found out. So yeah, I'm gonna show you what we're going to do, okay? So I've cut out two little pieces there. I'm gonna stamp this copper clay um, on this little greeting, which by the way says just sending a little bit of love your way and to my way of thinking This is the little bit of love and they can take that from the card and use that in their everyday life and they can think about me Think about me. It's all about me. No, it's not um, But anyway, I'm going to stamp that on there Let's turn that over because it's a bit bendy because this is just a scrap that I had don't throw these bits and pieces out because you'll find out that you can actually um, use all little shapes and sizes. So I'm stamping that down. I've done it in the copper clay to just to tie it in. And all I did was just run this through this little punch and punched it out. Now it's upside down. Maybe I should put it this way so we can all see. So now look, if I just give that a little gentle squeeze, that's not going anywhere. That way I can kind of move it around and hold it and just get it where I exactly want it. So that looks pretty good to me. So I'm going to punch that. Okay. So we already had one. Luckily, they're both exactly the same. Um, I'm going to raise this up onto some um, dimensionals. So let me just get a couple of little ones. Where are they? There we go. 
So I'm just going to pop a couple on the back. And I'm just using the small ones because, yeah, I wasn't sure what size the width of that would be. So there we go. And I'm just going to peel those off and attach this. So sometimes I like to sort of turn it sideways. I find that's a little bit easier. Um, and once you've got kind of the same border on three sides, it's generally in the right place. So there we go. Look at that. I can save that for another day. Now, the other thing that I decided to do was to just um, reinforce the shape of this butterfly. So I have, where is it? Where it is? Where it is? Oh my gosh. You know, it wouldn't be a Jill Lancet video unless I lost something. I just had that. I put that specifically there. Never mind. We'll just get another one out. And I just got um, one of our little sponge daubers. Little sponge dauber. You know that's going to turn up, right? Hopefully. And just to reinforce the shape of the butterfly, all I did was just go around the outside edge. Now, I'm doing it in the copper clay. It's going to be very stark contrast. But, yeah, I just wanted to sort of like give this little butterfly some absolute definition. Because we're go it's going to be against the blue background. So you'll see in a minute why I'm doing this. Now, this is the good part about this at the moment is I can kind of lift bits and pieces up and go down further than I, you know, that I need to. And then just fold it back down. So I'm actually only just going around the wings. Um, I'm not going over this bit because that's part and parcel of the, of the inside of his wings. So now I can go unfold this and just go in here. Unfold this side and go in here. And continue around. Just checking the time. Okay, so this will all become obvious in about five minutes. And there's our little butterfly. You can do his, his little bottom if you want to just do his little bottom I think I did it on the last one there we go okay so these things are so handy so handy except when you lose them but anyway there you go so now I'm going to put this together now I have my regular card base now I have oh I just rubbed them all out I will put them on in the description below don't worry about that so this is a regular card base this is boho blue and that is in matte one if you want the templates these templates that are really really so handy everybody's asking for them um, they're both in australian uh, metric and us size so this is uh, size matte one i'm just going to pop this on here and then I'll show you how close this comes to the, to the punching that I did. Right, so that's on there. Now I have our piece of uh, copper clay. And look, honestly, I really did not think that these two colours would ever, ever go together. But they do. Um, so... Kudos to the Stampin' Up artists that are so clever. They're so clever. Right, so this is going on with the usual border, which is about, you know, uh, I think it's half a centimetre shorter on two sides. And that creates this really small um, border. 
and then I'm going to pop this on but here's a little trick okay pop your little butterfly on first okay push it right into the corner we want him to be right in the corner we don't want to glue him on no we don't want to glue him on we just want to put some seal or glue liquid glue whatever close to so I don't want to go any further than that so I'm just popping that down there like that a bit in the middle and it's exactly one centimeter from either side now I don't know if that's going to work out in the US size but you might want to check that okay so I'm just lining that up so that this border this border and this border are all the same now if I can get this right it will be the same and I can just see there's the hole can you see the hole if you just go right to the edge of that hole it fits okay so now I've got that down here's my little butterfly he can go he can go back on there and be able to be removed but I found that a bit too springy now look if that's inside a closed heavy book that's probably going to be all right but I just put some little bits of glue just like that and you know just held that down with a block or something um, just to give that that chance to be flat and then I just pop that on there so I'm just going to glue that on because I've already raised it up and we're done yep we're done here so you might want to just sort of like position this up in this corner same border from there to there remember we we're all about balance and you know pleasing to the eye so liquid glue is really good in that respect because if you know you haven't got it exactly right you can move it around now um, we can add some of these gorgeous whatever you like sequins whatever you like I'm just going to pop these ones on these white ones and yeah my take your pick is still MIA so yep little scissors to the rescue so we can just pop a few of these around and we have got a really beautiful card that's also practical in as far as there's a bookmark attached to it so what do you reckon about that what do you think about that so when that pops off they've got this beautiful card that they can keep and use the bookmark in their books so let me know what you think about that i'm sorry if if um i'm a bit all over the place with this folding but you know um i will post all the details below so yeah i hope you have a go at that let me know let me know what you think let me know what you think about that um I'll see you on the next video. Have a great weekend, everybody. And um, yeah, I'll see you Sunday night. Thank you. Bye for now.